Howdy guys, CoreCat13 here, welcoming back for another episode of Paper Mario! Last go around, we entered the Koopa Bros Fortress and had to stop when we got in this room. But, we're back now, and oh, I see that wonderful badge over there, don't we worry. Ah, oh, yes. Yes, yes, and yes. That badge right there, that is the Power Bounce badge. It is, uh... Yeah, it's certainly one of the more useful badges in the game. In fact, I'm going to show off how it works right now. Come here, you. Now, I knocked over that Koopa, but that Babam's a more immediate threat. So, what Power Bounce does is it allows you to continuously jump on an enemy as long as you keep um, the mask. As long as you keep the action command going. And you can rack up a lot of damage, because, yeah, I mean, it's a crazy good attack, and it's especially good late game, whenever you get enemies that are rocking HP meters of at least, like, 30 or so. Hell, bosses get knocked down pretty easily. Combine that with, like, the jump charge badge, and man, oh man, I tell ya. That is one of the most OP badges in the entire game. And honestly, I didn't realize just how powerful it was until... I don't really want to battle you right now. I didn't realize how powerful it was until uh, this recording session. I guess I gotta battle you. I gotta switch. But yeah, I didn't realize how powerful it was. It really does just mow down enemies really, really fast. But, oh well. I guess that's one of the benefits of doing a Let's Play. You get to rediscover things that actually make future playthroughs a lot easier. And speaking of th making things easier, we're going to be picking up our next party member soon. And uh, she's a real explosive customer, let me tell you. Well, that's not physically possible. I, you know, I've always wondered how that worked. Like, is that magic? Like, seriously, how do those things jump up there? Because it really doesn't make any sense. Oh, well, I guess it's a paper gimmick. I mean, they did a lot of that in Super Paper Mario, and it kind of made sense. But then again, that was a 2D game. This is almost 3D, so anyway. I like how the flames here look more 3D than they did in Mario 64, despite the fact that they are clearly sprites. They look so much better. You know what? It'd be very interesting if they were actually 3D models, because it looks like a 3D model. And actually, fun fact, in Mario & Luigi Paper Jam, uh, the 3D characters were actually 2D sprites, but Paper Mario himself in every single 2D character was actually a 3D model, because they needed to make sure that they could lay flat. That's really interesting, and honestly, it just shows just how complex Paper Mario actually is. And they had to do that here. They did a really good job, because look at that. Paper Mario spins, he can lay flat. They really did go all out in making him feel like a paper-thin character. I mean, not quite as much as Thousand Year Door, which, by the way, you're going to be seeing me coil around with the items and try and swap out my party members and stuff. Oh, there's Michelangelo. Let's see what he has to say before I finish my statement. Okay, this is perfect, I think. Whoa, looks like Mario's here. Oh. I'm gonna go kick your ass soon, you little bastard. Mm -mm -mm. What was I saying? I don't even remember. Well, that looks important. I wonder if we're getting a bomb party member soon. Also, save point, just in case you need it. I personally don't need it, so we're going to continue onwards. Dang it. I hate when that happens, whenever there's a cutscene that interrupts my train of thought. Oh, well, I guess it's not that important. Let's see here. That block over there is a trap as we have just seen Michelangelo set up. But before we go into trap mode, we gotta take out enemies, and we are rapidly approaching another level. Can't do anything with that quite yet, so we're going to move on. 
And considering there's no other way to go... It's a trap! That's funny. Uh, loser serves you right, you fell for it. You fell for it. <laughs> I love the puns, man. Hello. Pink ba bomb. You don't see that every day. Oh, I wondered. I can't... I never in a million years would have thought that you would have shown up. What's my name? My name is Bombette. In case you haven't noticed, I'm a ba ba bomb. Pleased to meet you. How you doing, Bombette? Why do I get a feeling that you're a bit special? Hmm. That looks suspicious. Looks like they turned this large chamber into a jail cell. All us ba bombs got locked in here by the Koopa Bros. The Koopa Bros used to be cool, but they got conceited because Kami Koopa likes them. You know, before they were just typical young guys from Koopa Village. They were nice enough. I think maybe the desire for adventure corrupted them. I mean, can you blame them? I'm sorry, I simply will not obey the tyrants anymore. Those Koopa Bros can't squash the pride of a bomb. Huh, didn't know bomb's bombs were prideful. I mean, I guess it makes sense. I mean... You do have explosive personalities, so to speak, so... Hmm. Those stinking Koopa Bros work us too hard. They were making us work for 25 hours a day. What, are we living on Mars now? Hmm. Maybe that's the case. Who knows? So how long are we going to be locked up in here? I'm losing hope. I'm so hungry, so sad, and angry. I'm really angry now. I want to... I want out, man. I want out. Yeah, so do I. Oh, what's that? Why am I locked in here? Because I'm a menace. At least to those guys, those uncouth Koopa Bros. I told that asshole. I was just one of many bombs working here. But those Koopa Bros. Once Bowser took over, they started working us into the ground. I can't take it anymore, so I exploded near them. Yeah, that was a mistake. The Koopa Bros didn't like it. And then they locked up the rest of the bombs in here. You know, a bomb. Okay, I think I skipped through the dialogue a little too fast. I have a really nasty habit of doing that whenever I'm recording. Because I think that I leave enough space for me to read the dialogue. Because, especially here, Bobette is actually a really funny character. But I skip through it really fast because, like, I need to get the video moving. But, hmm. Anyway, so Bobette... Yeah, I bet you didn't expect you'd be getting a bomb. bomb Yeah, she's the designated bomb bomb party member. She can blow up walls and stuff like that. It, it's your regular old Zelda shenanigans. Which makes me wonder why they didn't do anything with uh, Bobby and Paper Mario the Origami King. Because that game is kind of like a borderline Zelda type thing, and they didn't do anything with Bobby. Which, by the way, I know what happens to Bobby. It's very sad. Also, bob -bom buddies. How you doing? See that? You see what I bring to the party, Mario? Oh, an escape route. Well, I... I guess I never thought about doing that before. I was so mad I just blew up over and over in one place. <laughs> okay, that was a little silly. Well, anyway, we can get out of here now, right? And so can everyone. Thank you, Mario. From now on, I'll tag along with you and help however I can. Well, that sounds fantastic, Bombed. I'm happy to have you on board. Now, we're about to get introduced to Bombed's uses in battle. But let me tell you, she's real helpful. She's not real helpful now, but later in the game, she gains this move called, I think, the Mega Bomb. Uh, it's either the Power Bomb or the Mega Bomb, which will target all enemies on the ground and do a significant amount of damage. But anyway, <laughs> Mario fell over. Alright, so let's show off what Bombette can do. Her primary move is kind of like the, uh, the Shell Toss, but it won't knock over an enemy, which is really stupid. Let's see here. Yeah, let's do a little Power Bounce. Why not? Man, that was a good one. I think we get a better one later on. Oh, man. 
Can you tell I haven't played this game in a while? Like, literally in over a week. Anyway. Here's Bombette's other ability. Bomb! Which, once again, will get progressively better as time goes on. But for the time being, it does 4 damage and you can get max charge. Dang! Sometimes I surprise myself. Power Bounce must be easier to do in Paper Mario than it is in Thousand Year Door, because... I don't know, there's just... It was really easy to pull off. Like, I was really shocked at how easy it is. Though I guess since I mentioned Thousand Year Door, I have actually been playing through Thousand Year Door again. Just to kind of see if it was as good as I remember, and considering I now have a friend who happens to share her name with one of the characters from the game, I'm not telling you which one, I feel almost kind of just this sense that I owe it to myself to beat Thousand Year Door. Um, yeah, it's a really good time. It's just as good as I remember. And speaking of good things, refund badge. That can be really handy if you're low on change, but eh, doesn't give you enough to really matter, I guess. I don't know. But anyway, I think I'm currently headed towards Chapter 5 in Paper Mario 2. And, uh, yeah, honestly, Chapter 4 is nowhere near as bad as I remember it. Also good timing here. Not much to say about that battle. Just got a fortress key out of it. But yeah, a lot of people hate Chapter 4. I actually don't think it's that bad. It is tedious, but... Excuse me. I personally think Chapter 6 is way worse. Like, I personally can't stand Chapter 6. It's super annoying. I like, think it's cool. I like the whole murder mystery thing, but... It's... It's kind of annoying, just with all the backtracking and stuff. That's the only really bad thing about Thousand Year Door. There is a lot of backtracking. And man, I don't know how we're going to get through that game with, you know, our current format or whatever. I mean, I guess it probably won't take that long because, heck, I think we're going to be beating Chapter 1 in four parts, so it's kind of handy. If you are wondering what the chomping is, I'm chewing on gum. Because, you know, I gotta stop myself from eating every five seconds. <laughs> that reminds me of this one thing Mom once told me. It's like, eat me out of house and home, but please don't eat in your room. Just like, way to see your priorities are in check. I know it was a joke, but... I don't know. There's something nice about eating in your room. You know, you can just put a bowl in your room, enjoy a snack or two while you're editing. It's nice. Let's see, I don't know why I swapped over to Bombette. But it doesn't matter anyway because we level up. And this is an easy choice because... Well, we're taking a lot of punishment here and honestly... Getting that HP probably was a smart idea because, oh god, the battle of the Koopa Bros was surprisingly brutal. Though, I guess that's probably on me for not battling enough, but, you know, whatever. It's not too bad, you can dodge a fight or two. Also, that is not exactly well textured. And fun fact, in the Wii version, you can actually see that crack levitating while you're in that room with the key. I think it was a glitch or whatever, but it's still funny to see that they missed a glaring issue. Time for your wake-up call, Koopas. Your ass is mine. That's a cool texture. I like that. I like the whole mossy thing they have going on there. Now I said I'd own your ass, what I meant by that is that I'm going to completely dodge you, because I have no business with you, you stupid Koopas. 
Mm -mm -mm. Now, let's see here. Ah, oh, shit, we don't want to be here. That's actually the entrance to the boss, so... Yeah, we definitely don't want to go there. We actually want to go here first, because... We will be getting probably one of my favorite badges in the entire game, and it's going to continue being useful, the Smash Charge. That will charge up your max hammer attack by two, and it actually compounds, so that's nice. Anyway, I'm a rambling mess. Thank you guys for watching this episode of Paper Mario. Next time, Koopa Bros. See you later.